Hello, we're going to do a quick review on some concepts related to React and building apps. So uh, I've got a blank project here um, that we'll be talking about <clears throat> some concepts with. Um, and this goes along with React Review on Canvas. Uh, it's in the module for this week. Um, so first thing we're going to go over here is a couple fundamentals to making an application with HTML5. In this case, we're using React to bundle that all together. Um, so the first thing is packaging and runtime environment. So um, runtime environments are, uh, you know, the way that we run our applications. So when we hit run in REPL, it runs a script called yarn start, um, which if, if we go to our package.json file, um, that's going to run React script start. And that basically takes our React project and bundles it into something that can be served as, you know, through our H index HTML file uh, and bundles the JavaScript all together to load those virtual DOM objects that we defined in app.js and other locations so that we can see them. Um, that was a very verbose explanation. Um, in short, um, the runtime environment is, you can just use the package manager, so yarn or npm. Uh, npm is node package manager, it's the one that's downloaded with node.js, um, and it's very popular, can do basically anything you need it to do. Um, fancy people like using yarn, um, there's a debate on why you would use yarn over npm on the internet. REPL just uses yarn by default over npm. So that's why we've talked about both. Uh, we just have NPM on the computers because it does all this, all the same things as Yarn does for our purposes. Um, they are, they do have different functionality, but um, they allow, they both allow us to download the packages that we need. Um, so those packages that we that, uh, need to run our project are called dependencies. You can see them in your package.json file, um, and in REPL, these are all located under the Packages tab um, in a regular project somewhere else, like in VS Code, they're all stored in a Node Modules file, uh, Node Modules folder, excuse me, and that contains all the JavaScript files required to make our project that we then import using those ES6 imports at the top um, to uh, make our project happen in React. All right, so that's packaging and runtime. Um, this next thing to talk about, let's see, credentials, permission sets. Uh, we, we, we've been talking about this with the Google Sheets API. Um, typically in a React project or in any sort of project, you have some sort of environment file where you keep environment variables. Um, so a way you can make that here um, would just be to hit the plus button, add file, then you can make a .env file, and in there you can define variables like react app my var, and then just whatever it is. And this is a file, this .env file, that you're going to want in your git ignore. Um, so sometimes they um, add this file extension local or um, development or things like that on the end of this .env file. Uh, we'll just add .env to our get ignore. You don't want these sort of variables on a public repository or something like that because if you expose like an API key or like some login credentials or something um, that completely, you know, trashes the security of your application and you're going to get charged hundreds of dollars on AWS or whatever you're using. Um, and so it's a very bad thing to push these sort of variables onto GitHub or to hard code them in your project. Um, so that's why we have the .env. Um, and you can access these variables um, using process.env and then whatever the variable name is in your project. Um, this is true for React and Node and other JavaScript related things. Um, we'll see if the console logs are variable here once the project starts. Okay, project started. Let's go to a new tab, F12, so we can see our console. 
and there's our variable that printed out hello. You can see it there. Cool. So that's that's a little bit about credentials and the host process and stuff like that. So the host process, you know, is this process variable that we can access, um, and then the environment, um, and yeah. And then the app package that gets shipped, um, that all has to do with uh, whatever's in index.js. So in our case for React project, we have, um, you know, our app component um, getting uh, rendered under the root um, element of our public uh, index HTML. So in index HTML of a React project, you're given a div with an ID of root. And then when you do yarn start or npm start, um, it adds all of the other objects to this particular element from index.js. This is the entry point to the project. And uh, when you do yarn uh, build or npm run build um, to, you know, package up your project and write, write some JavaScript files and things like that that you can then serve um, from like a static host, hosting service like Netlify or something like that. Um, then, yeah, index.js is the entry point and index.html is where things get added to. All right, hopefully I covered those okay. Uh, next thing to talk about is the state of an application. Along the way, we're going to cover a couple of these things. So, uh, let's pause. 